All right, Riley, give me something. Uh, hello, my name is Riley, and I am dead. I'm a ghost. Okay. Ooh. All right, uh, uh, Ryoku, uh, give me a, give me a line. Is this a fucking belated Halloween episode or something? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just trying to make sure that y'all's audio <laughs> levels are, are are good. All right, just give me a give me a a, a line real quick. Uh, hi, I'm Ryoku, and I don't know what the fuck to say. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's perfect, that's perfect. All right, Robin, go ahead. Uh, hello, my name is Robin, and I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Well, hello, Robin. <laughs> Didn't I do that one last week, Robin? You gotta get some original material. <laughs> I don't know, everyone said hello, my name is. I don't know, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm just... He's just uh, checking volume levels. Yeah, yeah, I'm checking y'all's audio levels, because I, I record straight up from Streamlabs well, OBS. no, I know what Bo's doing. I just I don't oh. know what you guys are talking about. Oh, okay, I okay. I didn't know what the fuck to say. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Riley. Hello, Ryoku. Uh, I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> I freaking butt chugged Sad. a bottle of vodka and I fucking dr I, I went flying somewhere. I don't know where I went. But yeah, I'm in rehab because the judge said it's this or your ass is going to the freaking maximum security uh, 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 party. <laughs> the maximum security party. <laughs> Oh yes, oh yes, it's it's a, it's a big oh, party. With oh, with OJ Cosby, uh, that bastard fucking uh, Harvey Weinstein, which I am. OJ isn't in prison anymore. What are you talking oh, about? No, 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 not... I know, but he had those insane Super Bowl parties in his prison cell. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> Shit, I bet no he one ordered like a ton of wings and like a fu like I don't know how he got all this shit and they let him just do it. Oh, cause it, it's fucking OJ. Cause like people are bron uh, bu uh, people were Buffalo Bill fans back in the uh, '80s, and a lot of them are prison guards. So like, uh, I bet yeah, he I didn't. Say, I have a feeling a couple prison guards were some fans of OJ that gave him a little bit of good treatment. Oh yeah, just like a fucking mob, just like a goddamn mob boss, dude. It's fucking crazy. Uh. All right, do you, you want to stop? A oh, okay, okay, my bad. Go ahead. <laughs> what? Okay, are, are you done like slamming every little object in your room? You, you want you want to get you <laughs> like all the drawers closed? Are we okay? Yeah, are you are you? Give me like, <laughs> like two minutes. You want to mess with like more like you know like a a, a thing uh, like crates full of silverware real quick? Like give them a quick jostle. Yeah, did you knock your pencil cup over? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking stuffed cabbage out and putting it in the microwave. Uh, oh, that's gross. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ugh, I I hate everything about cabbage. Well, hey, you're... I like red cabbage. Red <laughs> cabbage is awesome. Well, you're fine to be wrong. Oh, red cabbage is amazing. Disgusting. <laughs> you're just like my brother. Then he hates cabbage as well. I hate cabbage and cream corn. I've never really had cream corn, so I can't say anything. But here's an interesting Turns point. Turns out Mo's now. like Apparently, Squidward in the Cabby Patty. The first time he tries cabbage, he's going to start eating it by a truck load. Apparently Taco Bell has made it to fucking the UK now, apparently. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Now you can experience what it's like to get the runs as an American. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it'll be so great. Yeah, you know, like to this be is... fair, I do want to try Taco Bell at least once, at least once, just to say that I've tried it. Oh, Taco so... Bell's You're gonna fucking try it several times. Oh yeah, Taco Bell's fucking delicious, man. It, it's no. just yeah, but it's all the way in Plymouth, so it's not exactly an easy thing to get to. So oh, yeah. okay, mm. okay, dude, I I try to tag the uh, White it's Castle. It's cheap. It's not delicious. I think it's really good, but then again, I, I'm I'm a man with simple pleasures. Uh, in simple desires, and, and it's it's really easy to fulfill them. It's like you know, at this point, it's like, hey, just bring me food and pat me on the head and tell tell me that you like me. Just not cabbage. <laughs> just just not cabbage. Not cabbage. I mean, all all of the leafy green vegetables are just they're all the same. It doesn't matter. I like the leafy green vegetables. Don't no, I like no. I'm not dissing them. I'm saying they're all just as good. <laughs> good. Like I like Leafy. Cabbage is the true Chad. <laughs> He's the true Chad. <laughs> true Chad vegetable. Uh, I I I have to disagree with you there, me hearties. I I, I really really like uh, Leafy spinach though. Leafy spinach I think is really good. Fucking thank you, dude, dude, dude. 
<laughs> this is where I'm grabbing my phone. Also very good. Okay, you know what? This would be a good time to turn the notification. Spinach is coming around right? again. I'm glad broccoli came around finally. Broccoli is okay. It, it's it's not my favorite. I gotta be honest. Oh, uh, you need to you need to try cheesy cauliflower and broccoli. Oh god, that is awesome. I I tried on both. It's it's okay. It's just that the the fucking stuff. It stocks. depends on the cheese. It depends on what cheese you're using. <laughs> well, it's just the yeah, stuff. No, no, no. Buffalo. Yeah, we live in the United States. We don't get good cheese. Buffalo sauce, cauliflower. Okay, I might be d willing to try that. It's just that I fucking hate the goddamn stalks so freaking much. It's like the worst part of the broccoli, uh, I, I think, for me. Are we about to turn this I into the fucking the food? Are we going to turn <laughs> this into the fucking food show uh, like episode? Yes. We already did the food show. <laughs> we haven't done the food. Oh, well, no, me and you have done the food show. No, we're doing we're doing cooking next week with Bird. Food too. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, so no, that that'll be cooking, sort of food adjacent, sort of. But uh, yeah, so that way we're not um, repeating I, I, ourselves. I might have to join you for that because if I made myself a fucking really nice uh, rice bowl inspired by Food Wars when I was watching it, I was just like, I'm really hungry, and they kept going on about rice bowls, rice bowls, rice bowls. I'm like, fuck it, I'll go make a rice bowl. And then I was actually really proud of it, considering we had like minimal fucking ingredients and shit. And then it's like when I tried it, I'm just like. Oh, this is so nice! <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> oh yeah, like I I really love watching like Chef Gordon Ramsay and freaking Anthony Bourdain, oh, just I like love watching really really Gordon just well. cook but just but just cook basic single guy bullshit. Like uh, Anthony Bourdain was like, "Hey guys, so I know you probably don't have a girlfriend right now, so let me tell you how to cook for cheap like a champ, so you're not eating shit every day of your life." And he just goes, here, all you have to do is just, like, you, you, you get the egg right here, bam, you crack it on the freaking side so you're not cracking it on the pan. That way you don't get eggshells and shit all in there. And he just goes, this little process, it's like maybe five steps, and then, like, 15, 20 minutes, boom, you got breakfast. You're like, dude, I, I, I love the shit out of that. And, and Gordon Ramsay sort of, like, almost exactly the same way, except without the, uh, the drug abuse background. <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah, you know. Yeah, ooh, ooh, but you know, like, hey, I, 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 rec you know, uh, real recognizes real in this case because I have a drug abuse background and I like to cook sometimes. Oh no. Oh, no. Here, I'm going to be every little sad song for you. So anyway, uh, Riley, that's what really you... no. Th that actually fuels like one day I had an idea for an episode that I didn't know if I wanted to pitch where it was just like tragic backstories where we all tell our like tragic backstories i don't know man oh like my a God. yeah if I'm, if I'm, yeah i've got to pass too I will, be, I will take up the whole fucking episode so yeah like i i i'm going to go ahead and pass on that because like a a couple okay. weeks ago well like because like i i'm i don't think i i'm good with nostalgia anymore i, I don't like looking back at the past i kind of fucking hate it and I try to not play to play the shitty games to suck at. <laughs> God damn you. See, I'm trying to have a moment here. I'm trying to have like a serious moment and you you just you just shit all over it. Uh This is going to be the longest cold opening fucking ever. But anyway. All right. Well, we're coming up on the hour mark, so we might as well wrap it up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll go ahead and just do that. All right, Riley. I didn't even know we were recording. <laughs> yeah, I was recording almost ten minutes ago. I announced it. it was no, like, I was right. joking that we were supposed to start an hour ago. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, it, it happens. It happens. We, we we'll get to it when we get to it. Okie dokie. Um, so Riley, you recently had to get into editing your own podcast, and you used Audacity. I pray thee, regale us with tales of your Audacity uh, adventures. So, when I was in. Orlando last week with my good buddy Jim V. When you, editing. When, you, when you broke what? up with your rich friend, the one that was the ride to and fro? No, it's no, we didn't break up. We, just had, we didn't break up. We had just a little bit of a, a, a tussle, but it was fine. Did you pat him on the butt and say, I'm sorry, baby? <laughs> Not hey. quite. Okay, the okay. sex was out of this world. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so anyway, no, I, I didn't say anything. So anyway, go ahead, go ahead, buddy. So I went there and 
he said, all right, it's finally time. You're here. You have no excuses anymore. I'm going to teach you how to edit. So I'm going to edit your goddamn Pokemon show every week. Uh, you know, I, I, all right, Riley, I, I got I to gotta admit, like, I'm really glad that you said that kind of fast because there was a point in the story where I was thinking, oh, fucking Christ, it, it's going to be that kind of episode. It sounded kind of funny, I, I just got to say. I'm really gl- glad that you edited it with editing. Teach you how to editing. You have no excuses anymore. <laughs> you have no excuses anymore. Learn how to edit. I'm so, like, I'm, gl- I'm glad that you didn't ha- take time to do a dramatic pause. I was like, I'm going to teach you, pause, <laughs> how to edit. <laughs> So, anyway, so anyway, go ahead. I'm interrupting my spads. So that's very rude of me. So I edited. So the first thing I edited, I was taught. He she he showed me how editing worked as he was editing Pixels, our video game show, and then he sent me off to edit the Pokemon show. And the first two times I edited a thing, I actually thought it was like fun. Like it, I liked it. Like when I edited um. Variety Hour, the Pokemon show, and then I put that out. I wanted to edit something else, and I went and I found, I dug up this, like, ancient file of a podcast me and my friend Joey did, like, two years ago that Jinji was supposed to edit and never did. Mm -hmm. And I edited that and put it on the Riley Podcast magazine. But then it came to yesterday where I had to edit Largest Issue in the Galaxy for the week, as I'm going to start doing every week. And it and then that's when it set in. It's like, wow, this is a really time-consuming process, and I'm very tired, and I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> it fucking sucks, doesn't it? Yeah. To I be fair, to... I kind of, I, I kind of felt the same way as Riley when I first started editing because of when I first started, it was literally just music video bullshit, just something to uh, do to try and release tension and stress, which I actually thoroughly enjoyed. But the second I went away from the music video editing to like hard, like you know editing like straight content it was just like i have never been so bored and wanted to bang my head against a brick wall my entire life (laughs) oh my people don't realize how hard editing actually is so yeah you know it's it's not so much fucking hard for me it's it's the whole like you can hear me smack my lips and i i fucking hate it so much (laughs) and i snort this thing when i was editing my pokemon show one of one of my friends, I guess, records on a computer and has to do other shit on the computer while we're doing it, of course. So every once in a while, you hear a click or you hear a keyboard clack, and I'm just like, <laughs> gonna fucking snap your neck. Oh, <laughs> oh man, the, the the worst thing is like I was watching this Dark Side Phil compilation, right? And all it was was like the compilation of just his snorts. So it was like. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then that got me like real self-conscious and everything like if you look at any of my youtube videos my most planes which i'm going to get back to doing just because i've been sort of in a creative funk and i haven't been able other than want to do shit is there like visible skipping because you're cutting out snorting <laughs> uh no it, it's the uh well the, the 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 cuts are good it's just that i notice how much i fucking snort and it's fucking disgusting <sighs> Yeah, it's absolutely fucking disgusting. Uh, I, mean, it's like, <laughs> I also got paranoid at one point because of a lot of people on Discord used to tell me that I sounded like Darth Vader because I had the mic really close to my mouth at one point. I was just like, <sighs> crack constantly, oh. apparently. And I'm like, holy shit, I did not realize until people fucking told me. It's just like, god damn it. <laughs> oh, see, th- I got something for that too. When I was first starting YouTube out, I was going to be like just a. I was going to be just a co- All right. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to be like a, a video games compilation video guy. And then I, 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 I you know, I, I got into other shit. But my very first, like, I, first or third uh, fucking PUBG compilation video, I can hear myself with I didn't think to put music in the background because mm. all you can hear is this. Oh, no. The. <laughs> <laughs> it was just the fucking most disgusting thing that i've ever had to deal like i was i like wanted to quit i I wanted to delete the channel and just restart again like i deleted the fucking old video of that and everything but anyway uh 
<laughs> uh, Robin, do you have anything to add to the, your ed- editing hatred? I, I don't do any editing. You don't do any editing? No, nope, right. thank the Lord. Oh, oh, yeah, you're not missing a whole <laughs> hell of a lot, to be honest. You're not. <laughs> this is coming from three people who have done editing, so... Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're not missing out on anything. So. All right, let's go ahead and start her up there. A one, a two, a skiddly dilly a do. What's up, everybody? How you doing? Welcome to the MoCast. I'm your host, Mo Diggity. And joining us today are my usual two co-hosts. Say hi to Robin. Hello. And say hi Hello. to Riley. Uh, you, you, no! 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 You, you say <laughs> not, something! Not. No, no, cut! Uh, I'm not, you know what, fuck it. I'm not doing that again. I'm not, it just stays open, and it's all Riley's fault, okay? It, it's all Riley's fault, okay? This is, this botched open... Is your fault, fucking Riley? <laughs> and, and you know, right, you're not even one, getting. A you're, two, no, 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 uh, uh. And joining us today is our guest Ryoku Maru. She's an awesome streamer on Mixer and on Twitch. Say hi, Ryoku. Hello. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Good. Well. Today we're here with our one-time guest. He'll never be on the show again, Riley Brooks. <laughs> hey, your co-host, bitch. You're always on the show. <laughs> anyway, Until so you fire me. Oh, pfft. I'm going. I'm going to do you dirty like freaking Max did to Dick. I'm like you're fired. Get out of here. Like the PCP did to Monkey. <laughs> oh my God. You can only get fired if he pays you, and I'm pretty sure he's not paying you shit. So. You can't fire me. I quit. Fuck you all. <laughs> anyway, that that's my Monkey Jones impression. Just because I, if for some reason or another. His his face is stuck on Gilbert Gottfried's fucking uh, uh, head, and his or his, he does his have voice. A Gilbert Gottfried voice. He does kind of have that sort of thing going on. And so, really, what I want to do is I want to do a, a a movie with Monkey in it, but I just want to I want to pay Gilbert Gottfried to just dub over all to of his lines. Jones. Yes, you mean, yes. You mean kind of like the whole where he read the Fifty Shades of Grey thing on YouTube? Which is the best goddamn thing on the <laughs> fucking planet. It's it's literally on my top ten favorite YouTube videos of all time. I, I would listen I would listen to Fifty Shades of Grey if uh, Gilbert Gottfried legit did fucking do the entire book. I think it would be, be like fair, the best I'd fucking be the thing same. ever. <laughs> I'd be exactly the same. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, there is. You know, we're we're speaking. We're talking about horror tonight, and it sounds like there's a goddamn horror show going on in my living room because my niece oh, is fun. going fucking ape shit, and the dog is barking just because I think he wants his fucking ball. Uh, the the dog. My, my, I I love my dog. I I really really do. I hate my my mom's two little fucking ankle biter bastards because all they do <laughs> is fucking bark. Th- that that's a horror You're story. About the kids or the dogs? <laughs> uh, sometimes it's a coin flip. So today it's it's actually the dogs. Uh, when I'm talking about the dogs, but uh, it, you know, talk about a horror story right fucking there, man. These little bastards, like you can freaking ninja crawl past my mom and dad's room. And the little bastards will go, arr, 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 arr. like, oh, you fucking Let's little see. pieces of shit. Like, I- I'm just glad that I'm fucking old as shit now. And it's not like when I was 17, 18, sneaking into the house where I get fucked up or stoned or mm-hmm. some shit. Because those little bastards would alert. Like, I would get my ass whooped so many times when I was a youngin. See, that's a goddamn horror story for you right there. <laughs> is not being able to just go to bed fucked up when you want to on a freaking Thursday school night. Uh, and that brings us on to our topic of tragic backstories. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Let's talk about how many times I was homeless and let's try to go not, like be just brought down. It's like, you're going to end up sounding like the I fucking Minecraft the villagers. Like a joke, like, you know, I know, I know, I know. We're, we're just. Backstory. Yeah, I know, but. You know, we're, 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 we're not the heroes, but we got the tragic backstory. We, we kind of fucked that yeah. up. <laughs> we're supposed to be the heroes. No, no, wait, that, that would no, be. We're not. No, that actually would be correct because the hero with the tragic backstory would have already had the tragic backstory, and then they became a hero. 
Okay, so we're waiting on the hero part. I'm sure that'll come. <laughs> I'm sure it'll come any day we now. Never reached that step yet. And it's not like that we're not bad people or anything. We're, we're I think we're arguably all four good people. It, it, you know, we, we just haven't, like, donned the cape, and we don't have theme songs made of us yet. Well, I have a theme song, but I haven't <laughs> saved anyone. Uh, I haven't ran into a burning building to save, like, you know, a baby and two cats yet. You know, so, like, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting <laughs> to do that. Every day. Why not? Well, there haven't been any burning buildings around me, so if, if there were... <laughs> not in the right place. Yeah, oh. not in the right place at the right You're time. You're not looking hard enough. No, I'm not looking hard enough. Like, hmm. You know, once upon a time when I was living in Houston, uh, this fucking crazy bitch that we, I used to work at at the freaking little art supply store, uh, there were like a series of uh, house fires being set in the area that I lived in. And anyway, so I came, I, I had to take the bus from the venue that I was working at, and we, we had a great fucking party, barbecue, and all that. And I know I smell like smoke, right? Like fucking wo deep wood smoke. Y'all know the smell. But uh, the lady, the, the bus dropped me off in front of the bar, and that lady was drinking at the, uh, just, you know, you know she had an alcohol problem. You can tell, like, the usual people at, the, at your job who has the de drug dependency problem and who doesn't. Well, this one had an alky problem. And the next fucking day, because the next day was work day, she uh, she accused me of being an arsonist and being the one who set all those fucking fires. And what? now that now now impending in, in legal doom, that's a fucking horror story for you right now. Mm -hmm. But we're not talking about shit that happened to me. We're uh, talking about like horror and and all that stuff. We're going to be talking about like a. Horror movies, comic books, books. Sounds um, pretty horrifying to me, but oh, it's spookular. You know, it's it's all the spooky stuff, and I'm really, really looking forward to that. But first, I actually have kind of a really great announcement to make, and I wanted to go ahead and share this with everyone uh, who's listening. Uh, I applied the the show to Anchor FM, and they uh, accepted us. Right? I, I think all they do is just it's kind of like. You know, ITT Tech, you know, what they do, open the door. <laughs> you know, I, I think it was sort of like one of those things. So, but, but it still worked out. But I talked to a lot of people who uh, are on Anchor FM, and they say sometimes it's hard to get on stuff like Spotify and Google Podcasts, though I think it's uh, easier to get on some than others, right? But I'm pleased to tell you, as of today, they got us onto five platforms. Of course, we're on Anchor, we're on Spotify, awesome. We're on Breaker, I don't know what that is, but I'm happy to be on there. And we're on Radio Public, but the sweetest plum, the best one, is that we're now officially on Google Podcasts. So, we have a really strong distribution freaking line right now. We have multiple uh, ways for you to listen to the show. Uh, I dusted off the, my, uh, my SoundCloud account and I'm uploading that back again I'll start re-uploading back to uh, bit shoot and all that but if you want the archive of all the podcasts that we've done so far uh, you have to go to youtube.com forward slash C forward slash mode digby 42 because that's where the archive is right now but we are all working on moving the podcast over to is uh, dedicated to an exclusively podcast it's it's uh its own dedicated YouTube channel, and that, of course, will be the MoCast. But uh, we're working on that. As soon as we get that going, I'll let you all know, and everyone can celebrate. Hooray! Yippee! So yeah. All right, we got the uh, we called Google Play the best one, so we got that out of the way. Now we got to do four more takes calling the uh, other platforms the best platforms. <laughs> oh yes, Breaker. Who can survive without Breaker? Let me tell you, when I turn my Not Breaker, me. when I when I shut up. When I turn my Breaker app on to listen to the the tons of podcasts I know are on there, Breaker, it's like Hulu five years ago, but right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, anyway, we're, we're, we're going to cut that part out. I'm, I'm playing, I'm playing. Anyway, so I'm a huge fan of horror films, and I think everyone else is here too, or at least a fan of horror in general. Uh, Riley? Uh, would you like to start us off? Like, what what's your favorite uh, uh, bit of like a, a horror in the horror genre? I actually need like two minutes, so maybe you want to have somebody else start. 
Oh, okay, okay. Uh, well, Robin, let's go ahead and start with you. What, what's your favorite little bit of horror in the horror genre? Well, I don't watch many movies, and I'm not a big horror gamer, but I think what I like the most is SCP, which I've talked about before on the show. Yeah, SCP is a really freaking sweet game. Mm. Well, not not the game, but... The <laughs> he means just the like the lore in general. And oh, yeah. oh, okay, 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 okay. See, I, I like the game. No, the games are okay. See, I, I I like the game like a little bit. I haven't get, got to play it very much at all, but I, I started diving into uh, everything that's on YouTube right now, and there's some there's some fucking crazy shit in SPC, like the the the, the, the basically the alligator slash Godzilla monster that just keeps growing and growing. Oh, uh, there uh, is that the name? Oh, the can die, the indestructible lizard. Yeah. yeah, that's that's fucking freaky, and uh, I wonder I'm wondering uh where they're going to go with that like what what's that uh, what's the storyline for that uh for that well, it's subject all already written. it's all already yeah, written well, i mean you could do tales and stuff and expand on the lore a little bit like um the most recent so every time they so the the whole website is like clinical uh like documents basically like if you if you broke into a government building and read through all of their like documents that's kind of the the direction for the writing style on the website um, and one that came out recently, they run contests every time they have to do another 1,000 articles. So for SCP-5000, they did their, you know, contest to see who gets that slot. And uh, the one that won maybe hints at, uh, like, dealing with uh, 682 lore mm -hmm. a little bit. Former guest of the show, Jason, actually did a big review of SCP Containment Breach recently. Oh no shit! All right, we'll go ahead and put that into uh, that uh, link in the description. I think that'll be a lot of fun to go check out because I I absolutely love like because there's been times where I've blown off like streaming like when I was working in San Antonio, I would stream in the morning right, but we would start listening to U S S C P shit at my uh, job, and that would like it, I wouldn't be done listening to it yet. And I'd listen to about three or four more hours of his stuff, and I think I need to give it a re-listen to again because all this stuff is really fascinating. And the uh, there's a little video uh, consume series. SCP. Yes, consume. Yeah, you can listen to the Volgon, who just reads out the entire articles for you, which is good for people who are like visually impaired and can't read. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean that guy with the really deep voice? With a really, really nice voice, yeah. Yeah, yeah, him, And yeah. then there's, uh, if you like more, like, paraphrased, uh, like, readings of SCP, there's the Exploring series, who's done a lot of stuff SCP-related. Hmm. I haven't, I'll be honest, I, I've never heard of those guys, but I, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, check, I'll throw their links in the description, too, because I think that'll be a lot of fun to uh, check out as well. Uh, I think one of my favorite ones is the... Uh, I forgot the name of them. It's the the living mask, that's been around since like ancient times. Uh, I, I must have I must have listened to that story at least three other times. I don't I don't remember everything about it right now, which I, I should I was gonna go rewatch that, but I, I fucked off and did some other shit. Like I, I had a botch fucking stream before I came over here. Halo kept fucking crashing on my computer. And I forgot that I was going to brush up on my SCP shit. But I decided to play video games instead. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, that's that's one of my favorite characters right there. And uh, uh, listening to uh, that story is freaking fascinating. Because uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, masks and, and stuff that's in the horror genre. And I, I guess I, I really like uh, uh, stories like that. Like the... the like it will like the mask for instance how it just blobs onto your face and turns your personality upside down like that's that would be a great horror film right there i think like the mask but rated r and super gory and super bloody oh hell yeah wasn't that what the comics were like the mask comics yeah. they were like super bloody probably yeah yeah but uh, yeah. uh like they it, made it into a kids uh, a kids film and a kids cartoon <laughs> well you know I, the, the the cartoon wasn't so bad. I didn't really like the cartoon that much, but it wasn't so bad. But the uh, uh, the, the fucking movie is right where it's at. I, I love the shit out of that movie. But anyway, uh, so 
what, what would be one of your uh, favorite SCP characters, Robin? Um. Oh man, I can't remember the number. Yeah, it's the pr- the small the small. This is the only real problem I have with this series. Is like I'm better <laughs> with names, but I can't remember like SCP six four two or six eight nine or something like that. Like that just. I know there's an SCP that's just stairs. Yeah, I remember yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah. Don't remember the number, <laughs> but the one the one that terrifies me the most. I think it's the uh, the the one where it looks like a normal fridge, but if you look away from it, then it like you know kills you or something. I can't remember exactly what it does. Dude. But. I, I fucking love horror freaking uh, 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 appliances. Like, uh, uh, Patton Oswalt had a really good one. Uh, he had a bit. It was like, uh, I think it's like Death Bed, the bed that eats people. And there is, let's see, uh, this is the best part of horror also, is that you can go off with like a budget of 50 fucking bucks and you can make yourself a freaking horror movie. It's been done thousands of times before. The every I think every one one of them is almost better than the last one. Like uh, Peter Jackson before he before he started doing uh, major movies, uh, he was doing like old school uh, like under a thousand dollar budgeted movies. And I love the shit out of all of them. The, he's the one that uh, uh, Peter Jackson. Of course, he's the one that did the uh, Lord of the Rings, but he also did. Uh, Dead Alive and uh, Bad Taste, and he did the Frighteners, which I think was his first really big. Uh, uh, it was his first really big movie in Hollywood that he ever did. And uh, hold on one sec. What's up, sweetie? Oh, I'm not playing. No, no, honey, honey, honey. I'm, I'm not, sweetie. I'm not playing video games right now. <laughs> the horror of being interrupted. Dun 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 dun. Sorry, my life. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sweet. Okay, all right, all right. Hold on one sec, y'all. Yeah, I'm going to be right back also for a minute. I'm just going to mute myself like this. So oh, okay, no problem, no minutes, problem. So. Well, I'm editing Welcome it. the Riley and Robin show. Well, no, like, the best part about this is we're doing this on Wednesday, so I have a few days to edit, so it's not like it has to be out in 20 minutes. What's up, sweet? Hey, Mary? Right here? Riley and Robin got this. She wanted to be on the show. Hey, Robin, you yeah, yeah. Five can, Nights at Freddy's. Uh, I don't know if I've ever played it. <laughs> but you've seen it. <laughs> well, of course. It's kind of hard to avoid at a certain point. Uh, she likes to sit up with me a lot lately when I'm just playing my little, like, when I'm playing, like, Nintendo games and stuff. Cause she, Aww. she, she knows that I have room, because, uh, because like I, I think she just wants to get away from everybody, you know. Because this is my sort of like my sanctuary is the fucking laundry room, which luckily we're we we've got this big fuck off container that uh, we can store all of their shit in, and they're cleaning out their old room. We're gonna rip up the carpet, put some wood boards down there, and then I'm getting that room. So. Look, and I'm going to soundproof the fucking shit out of it. And uh, then I, I can scream bloody fucking murder all I fucking want. Or just like listen to rock music and shit. It's going to be fucking awesome. But uh, what were y'all talking about? I was like, I was trying to listen, but I had my hands full. It was five nights. Five but nights I remembered the number of the SCP that I was thinking of, which is 3001. And what is that? Um, it is the it is more so I like some of the more story based SCPs because there are some that are just like you know really brief and there are some that are really long and I, I tend to like the longer ones like exploration logs and things. Um, and three thousand and one is the story of a guy who got trapped in like an alternate dimension sort of, mm-hmm. um, which has a very low Hume level, and Hume level in SCP is, uh, like, the amount of reality there is. So it's like a low reality alternate uh, dimension that he got stuck in. And it details his five years talking to his little, uh, like, radio in there. God damn. Yeah, Sorry, it, I thought... is, it is really terrifying and awesome. There's one that's supposed to be like just like a, a, a puddle of goop 
and that anywhere and it's like randomly placed on uh, parts of the planet and every time the the SCP foundation finds one one of them they go through great lengths to cordon off the area uh, because apparently it's like a fucking blob or acid monster and it'll like it'll fucking get you and then every once in a while it'll burp up some fucking horrific monstrosity or like someone that it, uh, someone that it ate and it's all like a uh, listless and uh, uh, just like empty brain. Like it, it's like it looks like it's fucking, it, it's a uh, brain has been holed out or something. It, it's absolutely fucking insane. Uh, there's another one Bro. where it's supposed to be, uh, it, it's like a little like regular apartment, but made out of human skin, and those who go in there never come out. It's one of those things. That's uh, extra extra creepy. And uh, what a lovely thing to come back to! <laughs> oh, it's it's absolutely fucking amazing. It's it's fucking nuts because uh, apparently, the, like every time there's a person that goes into that room, the door closes, and the next time someone goes in there, there's an uh, there's another piece of furniture or another lamp or another freaking rug or something, and it's all made uh. out of flesh, and it's absolutely fucking uh, disgusting and creepy as hell. They're not all horror themed, all SCPs. There's a few in there. Like 999 is this little slime creature that just tries to make everybody happy when they think that someone's sad. Aww. So he'll go and like hug people who have like depression. Well, I'd rather get hugged by that rather than CP that we meet at the start of CP Containment Breach. We don't want to be hugged by that. So. <laughs> you mean that gross chicken or? I don't. I don't know what it is. That's one seven three. The statue. Looks like a chicken. You think Paul it looks like a chicken? Peanut. It looks like a mutant chicken. <laughs> there's a, there's a uh, one of the creatures that is supposed to be like three kinds of doll, like one's like made out of metal, and there's like it's made out of two other substances, but the uh, the backstory behind that one, is. Uh, really freaking creepy as hell it really sucks because i'm looking i'm at i'm at scp doc the scp foundation right here and god there's just there's literally like thousands of them so to like to try yeah, and like scp-wiki.net uh yeah that's that's where i'm at right now the scp dash series it's fucking great there's it's just like so much uh that that's in here you can literally probably get lost like uh, i think maybe it's naked doll or the real toy i might be talking about but it's uh, the uh, that i was just talking about but this is uh this is awesome i think i'll put this in the description too so everyone check it out it's really fucking fascinating but uh riley are you ready to give us your little bit sure all right cool so one of the oh go ahead one of the big things in the horror genre that Gets, gets my goat that I'm interested in is uh, I actually suggested this topic as horror movies and we sort of broadened it and talked about horror movies. I'm very into like those like 90s, 80s style slasher films like Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street. Fucking A, right? Great movies. Yeah, <laughs> Wonderful see, movies. You know, there, there's something about those movies that if you compare them to today's PG-13 rated schlock. It's, you know, Hollywood had a really, really good shot at making some really good horror movies. Instead, they they, they kind of, like, shit the bed a little bit and started making everything, like, PG-13, or they wouldn't, like... Hey, Happy Death Day is a great movie. I don't understand horror movies where no one swears. It's fucking weird to me. I mean, me. come on, even the piss oh, take horror movies, like, uh, like you know, a scary movie, even that has swearing in it. So it's like, well, like, well, for crying out loud, uh, like, uh, if if it's done artfully, then I I get it. Like, and, and horror, some of the best horror movies, uh, weren't even really that bloody. Like, if you take the mm. old old movie Psycho, you only ever see like you you do see some blood. But it's done for effect. Blood. Yeah, you like it, it, you see blood, but it's done for dramatic effect, and it's done to shock you. And it, it, it's supposed to be, uh, uh, you're supposed to recognize the f finality. 
in, in the action that just happened in on, on fucking screen. And I'll talk about that well, in a second. Well, and back then, the movie theory of it was that because blood was so hard to portray, uh, portray in black and white, they tried to use it pretty scarcely. Mm. Well, the, the one of the coolest things that Alfred Hitchcock did was, uh, the, it, since he was filming in black and white, uh, the, the lady, the, the very first victim in the movie, the old movie Psycho, uh, she used mm-hmm. Hershey's syrup. It was chocolate syrup because the, yes. uh, the, the, the strawberry syrup didn't look thick enough. And so uh, she's squeezing a bottle of chocolate syrup, and it looks like it, – it's like the best little cheap effect that uh, I've ever seen in the movie. It's, it's one of those little things that only the horror genre can actually pull off, and I really appreciate that. That's why I like uh, – um, that, that, that's why I like uh, 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 Peter uh, – uh, Drop kick you, Steve. Who's – What? What? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was I not muted? No, oh, no, no, no. We heard we'll dro- I'll drop kick you, Steve. <laughs> That's my dad's which... name, and he was meowing outside my door. Which is pretty good because I couldn't remember Peter Contact Jackson's the, uh, fucking movie Iowa name. <laughs> the Alinity Patrol. Yeah. <laughs> Patrol, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, man. yeah, I I couldn't. That, that's that was a good inter- interrupt because I couldn't remember Peter Jackson's fucking name while I was trying to make a point. But uh, uh yeah, uh, li- like I said, you know, there there was just something. There was a certain magic to like the the Friday the Thirteenth and Freddy Krueger movies that I just Hollywood with all of its great special effects, it just can't replicate. Riley, that, that's I'm going back and forth with you. Is he yelling at Steve again? I'm going. To, I'm going to, have to go and edit some <laughs> stuff out. <laughs> I'm at the 41 mark. Oh, my, my my Discord just wasn't letting me unmute for a second. What you say, Mo? Oh, it's no problem. No, I was saying that uh, uh, there was magic that the the ho- uh, uh, current day Hollywood can't replicate that the old horror movies have. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot about like the the cheesiness and you know the lack of budget because it was the 90s that gives the movies their charm. Well, now we have an expectation of quality and, you know, realistic looking blood. Who cares is about quality? Kind of Bring general. back bad, good movies. <laughs> well, better yet, you know, I, I'm, I'm more into, like, low-budget unknown studios pumping out horror movies and stuff. Like, there's a, a, there is a, 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 there's a series of horror movies. Like the ma- it's the Master of Horror uh, series. That was in the mid two thousands, and they had a, a lot of the uh, uh, horror movie aficionados. They had the guy. Uh, they had a uh, uh, what's his name? The one that plays the the fucking leprechaun in Leprechaun. Uh, they they had him in there. They've had uh, uh, the dude who played. I, I fucking forgot his goddamn name. I can't believe that. I always I, I hate it when you're trying to remember something that you remember all the time at a specific moment, and you just fucking forget all about it. But the dude who uh, – Freddy Krueger, he's in a few of those master of horror movies, and uh, uh, so is Meatloaf. Meatloaf is in one of the more gruesome ones because it's a, it's a movie about uh, these people who uh, – uh, they're, they're Skinners, taxidermists. There we go. It's a movie about a couple of taxidermists Skinners. who – Well, Skinners, sorry. Shut up. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah uh, – they they nixed this uh this uh this one freaking fox or whatever, and it has it, its skin is blessed, but of course since people got it and the, their people are greedy, it played uh, the the curse sort of played up on that and made them into like murderous crazy fucking people, and in that movie fucking uh, uh meatloaf skins himself and like takes like he takes off the 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 the, the fat part and the back part. And fucking, like, just yanks it off like he's being, like, fucking scalped put on his body. It's the most gruesome fucking thing I've, I've seen in a while. It's very well done. That's that's if you're into the, the, the gore uh, of the movies, which can be very uh, advantageous. Like, uh, if you look at some of the stuff that The Walking Dead d- uh, did, when, well, before they their shit got nerfed for fucking no goddamn reason. Like, there was a... A, a tiny fucking group of people who signed multiple petitions 
and they tried to pass it off as, look at all these petitions telling AMC to cut down a lot on the gore. How am I supposed to watch this with my kid? And like, well, uh, excuse yeah, me. like, how about you don't? Apocalypse. <laughs> It's the the apocalypse, everything. People are being eaten and torn apart here. Why is your stupid little spawn watching yeah, this exactly. shit? Like, uh, once your again, stupid little spawn. <laughs> once again, fucking children ruin things. I fucking swear. I mean, not being funny, but the fact is, everyone's being so, like, PG-13 these days. I watched a ton of shit I shouldn't have watched as a kid. Yeah, it didn't mess me up. It didn't permanently scar me. If anything, I look back on those days with fond memories. Like, the Dark Crystal, that shit really scared me as a kid. But it scared me in a good way. It didn't, like, traumatize me or anything. It affected the, the art form that the Dark Crystal had. And it also went to show... Uh, I kind of got a bit uh, melodramatic with this bit, but there you go. Um, no, go ahead. If people look like they're a bad guy, they're probably a bad guy, so... <laughs> yeah, like, the, the one, like, sort of, like, eating raw flesh... It is probably, you know, like some sort of bad person, okay? Like, you, you, in, if they have, like, barbed wire wrapped around their fucking bat, they're probably a bad fucking person. So, like, why are you I so... Mean, I mean, that, it's, it's ridiculous that people just think that they're... That they, they need to lower everyone's standards just so they can suit them. And, and like, family people and, and, and PG and the PG-13 types really ruined The Walking Dead. Because I that mean, was fine for a while, but then yeah. it just went all to hell. Another one which I don't class as a horror, but there's definitely, like, a horror-esque theme in there at a certain point. Have any of you ever watched Return to Oz? Yeah, uh, I watch Return to Oz. It's fucking weird, and it, that's that's got some the odd bit horror that elements. Me out the most was that creepy ass bitch who was able to replace her head. It's like that scared me the heck as a kid. It's like I look back on it now and I can't help but laugh. And it's like I even watched the scene today, and I'm just like sitting there laughing my freaking ass off. But it's like as a kid, it scared me, but again, in a good way. It didn't like overly traumatize me, but. It allowed me to, you know, piece together certain things in my own head, which people weren't telling me. So it's like, it's a good way for kids to learn. If they get traumatized by it, fair play. You know not to show them anything of that caliber until they're older. By all means, try it once or twice. But after that, if the kids still don't like it, don't fucking do it anymore. It's it's not rocket science. Why, why do you have to ruin everyone else's fun just because of your little brat ends up ends up not learning their lesson and being like, I still want to watch this <laughs> constantly. I mean, it's like, for Pete's sake. Yeah, and there's a lot of I kids. I want to be tough and brave and watch the scary thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, you piss the f and shit the bed, Billy. You can't do that anymore. <laughs> like, no, you're not doing that. No, you're, you're watching My Little Pony and you're going to love it. But my little pony, my oh. I had a point where I was so freaked out by a horror movie that I just decided I was just gonna like reset and start watching like Sesame Street and shit again. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, when I was a kid, like I couldn't watch zombie movies uh, worth a damn because zombie movies uh, would just scare the shit out of me. But then it never stopped me from watching them, and that's why I like the Return of the Dead series so much because. I, I th that's what I recognized as a child that this scary stuff is also kind of funny, because I was able to discern, you know, uh, uh, the bad guys, the evil stuff from like the the funny shit. And as I got yeah. older, and you would rewatch that movie, uh, you recognize a lot more. There was a lot more funny than there was horror in that little group of freaking movies. And uh, that that's what I remember walking in on my grandma and my mom watching day of the dead and it was at the scene where they're trying to freaking wrangle zombies and one of them fucks up and gets eaten and the other one's like pushing them back and it hard cuts to like a couple of people who are like oh hey did you just fart like no nah, man just been sitting here huh <laughs> and, and, and the other guy goes huh and then it hard cuts back to the guy, and he's getting torn apart from like the guts, like it's just like a, he's being stretched between two horses. Just ah, and I walked in uh, while I was, cause I was a, a fucking kid. I was trying to bother my mom, and I wanted attention, I guess. And, and I saw that, and I saw him getting torn apart, and I ran away screaming and crying. 
And then my mom swore at me. She's like, got a fucking bed. <laughs> Reminds and me then, of my mom. and <laughs> then they and then they laughed and then I had fucking nightmares and she told me to shut up and go to bed because they're what all like it? they're all trying to chill without children and here I go fucking it all up while they're trying to watch a freaking zombie movie. Well, it's like not being funny. I actually got more nightmares from trailers and shows which normally don't aren't horror based in any way, shape, or form, uh, and real life things rather than horror movies. Because of, I remember I had like the most restless sleep at one point when I had three house spiders pop up in my house within like 30 minutes of each other. That was the most horrible night of my life as a kid. Jeez. I literally could not sleep that night. And because of it, it was, there were two popped up in my room. After the first time, I ran to my brother's room thinking I was safe. And one popped up there and I thought, okay, my room must be safe now, right? Nope, there's another one. So I literally oh, could not sleep that night. I was terrified and I still hate house spiders to this day. And one of the things I cannot stand. And I actually had nightmares to do with, I don't know why, because I know, I know for a fact, I never watched Tron as a kid. I know this as a fact. <laughs> but for some reason, I dreamt of uh, the Tron face uh, from the master computer being on my TV. And I also dreamt that my entire house changed from my regular house layout to like a, a, a really messed Spider-Man. out. No, Crystal Maze layout. It was really weird that I still remember that dream because it terrified me so much. And this is like 20 years later. It's like that that dream left a massive impact on me. And that was just from everyday things, not even like anything horror. So it just goes to show it's like sometimes it's not the horror that you got to worry about. So You don't have to worry about house spiders because... Probably a couple of them crawl into your mouth every night. And you can oh, don't tell me that! No, Stop no, 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 no! <laughs> see, see uh, you know, I've heard that stat all my life, and I'm pressed no, X to doubt. Okay, so it is a bullshit stat. No, 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 stat. it's bullshit. I was Be- just fucking with Because her. that's an awful lot You're of spiders. <laughs> well, today's topic is horror, so she's playing to the crowd here. That's good, that's good. Horrible person. Ten points to Gryffindor. <laughs> good job, good job, Robin. <laughs> Uh, but no, 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 it's like, because I, w- I always think to myself, you know, that sounds like a bullshit stat, because that's an awful lot of spiders people are I'm eating. I'm sure it happens, it's just not, like, a regular thing. Yeah, Depends be- on where you are, I mean, I could totally see that being an accurate uh, percentage in Australia during spider yeah, that's just, season. So- yeah, that's just Australia <laughs> stuff, you know? Yeah, that, that's that's an Aussie it's problem, not an American. Drop bears, you know, who knows? I mean, I'm never going to set foot in Australia, period, after I, after I saw a picture of this isn't frost, this is spider webs. I'm like, right, never going. I'm not going there with Vodka. Nope, nope, nope. Never, never, never. So. I honestly kind of got used to it because down here in Texas in the south, uh, when springtime shows up, that's when all the, uh, the spiders start flinging their web everywhere. And you'll see, like, little dr- white drifts, and that's, those are spider eggs. And I mean, don't get me wrong, uh, oh, and they're can... and they're oh, the webs that they torn down, and they're just moving from another location, and so you see all that all the time. And I guess I just got used to it. I I kind of like spider web designs and stuff. So I mean, don't get me wrong. If it's like a smallish spider, like a garden spider or a money spider or anything like that, I can deal with them. It, I can I, I can actually clasp them in my hand and be like, all right, there you go. Now get outside where you belong. You don't belong in here. But if it's a house spider, those Buggers get zero mercy. I will find the nearest heavy object and squish them. They get Destroy. zero mercy. They keep all the other bugs out of your house. I, I just but like... I haven't, I haven't got any problems with bugs. So. That's because of the house spiders. They're helping you out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they can help me out by not being in my room where I sleep. Alright? If, they, if they're anywhere where I don't go or I don't look at, fine. They can stay in there and I won't give a rat's ass. Well, they're they there. come in my... Do- if they come in my domain, I show zero mercy. So, see, uh, all anybody ever had rats in their house before? That's pretty yes. No, yes. that work. Oh well, uh, uh, I, we have a couple of mice here, but like they they don't really fare too long because they either get caught in the traps or, and we have two cats here, and the black and white cat is a really good mouser. The last couple of weeks, I think he's gotten like three or four, maybe even four or five. Get some gifts. Yeah, we got some gifts. Everyone got some gifts. Hey, can you shine the light more? Thank you. I remember one right. cat I used to have jumped up in the air and caught a fucking blue jay. See, I, I believe I, that. 
That sounds I awesome. Actually, I actually had a black cat before I moved down to uh, southwest uh, England. Uh, we had a black cat, uh, and she was blind, deaf, and only had her sense of smell and no teeth. She still brought birds into the house. She could still catch birds on Damn. top of the roof. She was a hell of a cat. We were outside in the pool, and all the all the birds started going crazy. We're like, "What the hell's going on?" And we see our, our cat Shadow just with a fucking blue bird in his jaws, and all the other birds are like, "Yo, let go of him! What are you doing?" <laughs> Dude, I bet all those freaking like all the birds are like, you know, "No, Steve, no! What are you doing? You monster! Let him go!" And the other half of the freaking birds are like, "We fucking told you not to buzz bomb the cat, you stupid bastard!" <laughs> so yeah, you dip too low. I you used my cat. Cat's name too. Getting that. Your your cat's name, stupid bastard. <laughs> I thought you said Steve. Oh well, I, I mean, I call well, I called the bird Steve. Oh, like, I you know, because I was oh, trying to. Cat. Stupid bastard, same thing. Oh yeah, but you know, I was well because I was trying to paint a mental portrait for our people who are listening. You know, they were like, "Oh, the bird Steve," and the fuck you, Riley. God damn it, you <laughs> bastard. I'm sorry, I can't hear. <laughs> I'm huh? deaf. Uh, we kind of gathered that. <laughs> all right, so so Riley, let's go ahead. We're we're about to. We are about to approach the uh, the hour mark here. So let's oh, go wow. ahead and uh, l- let's have like a good, n- a nice last round of questions here. Uh, what is a horror movie that made you have nightmares, a- and not only as a kid but sometimes as an adult? And uh, uh, Ryoku, you want to start us off? Uh, well, as sad as this is, well, t- I'm going to mention two films. Uh, well, or one, it doesn't It doesn't I, have to be a film. I guess it could be anything in the horror genre, if I can make that easier well, for Well, the you. funny thing is, funnily enough, barely any games have affected me. So I actually really enjoy most of the mystery m- games that I play, like Danganronpa, for example. I've never had a nightmare because of that. But uh, the two films which definitely scarred me the most because of I, my brother and sister were like massive horror fans. So it's like I would just walk in on them watching certain things and I would happen to walk in at the worst possible moment. Um, the first one is Saw, as I mentioned before we started. Um, my brother and sister okay. turned that on okay. while I got back from work at one point and I happened to wake up at the worst possible point and someone was sawing their arm off and I'm just like... Yeah, I'm just gonna go throw up and go and hide in my room now. So yeah, that was that was not nice. And two, Gross. um, you you guys are probably gonna laugh at me for this one, but uh, <laughs> Final Destination. Uh, I just oh no, you know, dude. I, all bullshit aside, the very first couple of Final Destination movies really had an effect on specifically America because I don't remember anyone in Europe or or, or the UK or anyone. Or I guess you'll be the first, but uh, dude, there's a there's a Final Destination movie where someone dies because the person was driving behind one of those trucks that carried logs and shit, mm. and uh, I, it never fails. Every couple of years, I'll see a new picture of uh, there will be a logging truck, and everyone is just driving on the left or right hand side away from it, and all they do is just say Final uh, Final Destination, and enough said. And you'll never see. You'll never see people. Is Final Destination just like live action Happy Tree Friends? Like they all die horrible random deaths. Well, Isn't see. That the premise. Well, there's some well, truth yes. to that log one because there's a video that I always think about that like really fucks fucks me in the head. Where like this dude's driving on the highway, and the truck in front of them, a brick comes out of it and just comes through the passenger side window and just instantly kills his wife. Yeah, I, I've and seen. And you just hear the dude screaming and crying because like this fucking brick came out of nowhere and just killed his wife. Oh yeah, I, I I think I might have seen that a long time ago. I've also seen the uh, the picture of uh, there's it's just a still shot of one of those logger trucks, and someone just didn't stop in time, or the truck stopped, and all it is just a uh, half the car freaking shredded and gone. It was like it was a fucking crime scene, or not a crime scene. It was an accident scene, or a fatality scene. But I, I saw that, and that 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 fucked me up too, man. But there, there's a lot of shit where people go fucking Final Destination and they'll not do it. Like, they, they won't walk under, like, a ladders or, or – well, I don't think that there's really – we don't live in a it's culture – well, we don't live in a culture where people are dangling pianos uh, <laughs> up, up above up above San Franciscan-style uh, 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 
uh, buildings and stuff like that. Because that was a fucking thing. That was a trope in horror movies was the dangling of uh, a piano. Like, dude, how many fucking people in America or New York or San Francisco have pianos? Because those are always the two destinations that, that have pianos in them. I well, don't know you why. Have a big, like, office building or something and you have, like, heavy furniture up there, the way to get it down is to, you know... Yeah, but it, he's boss. right though. It's like it's not it's not like instead of standard furniture, you know, let's say like a fridge or like a really long. Yeah, of course, big, the piano uh, is exaggerated. Or anything. Yeah, the the piano is a bit much. So I mean, how many people could afford like a two thousand pound piano, and how many people out there could actually play the piano to the extent that what that they need a two thousand pound piano? I mean, come on. Pianos are surprisingly common. Uh, and honestly, you'd rather spend less money on a goddamn keyboard than uh i've thought about getting a piano just because like i see them on craigslist all the time where they're like huge fucking piano if you can get it out of here you can have it like <laughs> oh yeah i see that all the time funny. i see it I'm all like, the time man, that looks like a nice piano maybe i should go and like pick that up it's a good deal <laughs> all you right suddenly become the ultimate pianist i mean how much are pianos and how much is it to rent a moving truck for a day if the moving truck's less expensive just go Get a moving truck, get the piano. I can, I can figure out a way to get a piano out of there, right? <laughs> the, For free? The horrific thing is not having a piano in your house. Because then you're just uncultured. Funnily <laughs> enough, I actually exactly. used to you're have lame a piano if you don't have a piano. Well. I used to have one, but it was just like really badly out of tune. We got rid of it a little while back, though. Oh, I, I, I would imagine because there's a lot of friends who had pianos that just got rid of them because they just they never played them or they got out of tune. And it's expensive and they take to up tune them. Space. Yeah, they... yeah. Ours was like right in front of the main door, pretty much. It's like you'd open the door, and then it's like you see the piano like immediately in front of you, like a step after you get in, uh, get past the door. So we we just got rid of that. So uh, like I would be like I would crash at my buddy's house, and he had a piano, and I would like get drunk as shit. And I would, like, do the elbow thing. You know the elbow thing when you're, like, drunk as fuck and the hand's not working but the elbow will. And all I <laughs> – like, I, I would, like, put my freaking elbow up and as soon as I put pressure on it, but it do 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 like, fucking shit. And it would scare the shit out of me. That's something I, I fucking hate is just, like, random noises, unexplained noises because I don't believe in ghosts. So what the fuck was that that just made the noise? That fucks in my head sometimes. Oh god, I, I believe in Ghostbusters only because of uh, the amount of horror stories my mum's told us about like our previous house uh, that we used to live in, actually. We honestly think it used to be haunted. Because uh, this, was bef uh, this one I'm about to say was before I was born, but my mother and my father remember this very vividly. Uh, my, they went upstairs to start renovating the top attic to like two separate bedrooms, which would eventually be my mine and my sister's room in one, and my brother's in the other. And... Uh, it's like my brother used to go upstairs all the time by the main attic and just like s speak to no one. And then my mom would ask, who's he talking to? And then he said he, he would speak to his little friend. He would then start re uh, speaking old Victorian nursery rhymes no one's ever <laughs> told him before. And then there was also an incident where my dad heard s stuff downstairs one night. Of course, he was a wuss, so he got my mom to go down. And it was one of my brother's uh, toy trains, which required batteries. So my mom thought, oh, well, the cat must have knocked it or something. So she didn't think much of it. And she picked it up to turn it off and take the batteries out. There was no freaking batteries in there. See, that that's happened to me that's a few freaky. times before, and it's fucking freaky. Uh, but uh, uh, Riley, why don't you go ahead and tell us something that's giving you nightmares as a kid and sometimes, well, when you're, like, slightly older. You know, just a few years. Ago. Like, what was it like for you a few years ago Rude. when Rude. you were watching when you were watching some horror movies? <laughs> <laughs> like last week when you peed the bed. Like, what did you watch before? <laughs> Man, you know, the movie's pretty scary. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie. I have a okay, movie all right, no, no, you, you stop, you stop, you stop. We're not talking about Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. <laughs> Take this seriously. I we're on. I literally we're... had nightmares about I have a news as a kid. Okay, no, no, you know what? No, you're not. See, dude, we're on Breaker <laughs> right now, okay? The great people at Breaker and the great people at Radio Public, which we are both on. That's the five freaking platforms that we're on right now. You know, these people have faith in a quality product, and you are sullying this. I and you are, Pokemon and you are, you there. can't There's keep pretending on that we're only too. on BitChute. We're on better platforms now. Yes, <laughs> yes, all right, yeah, we, like, the good people at Breaker do not deserve this shoddiness. 
So you you up your quality, sir. Our breaker listener does okay. not deserve this quality. Yes. What would Google fine, Podcast think? Fine. Anyway, so go ahead. What what was it that gave I you? Once, a... I once watched a movie called Don't Hang Up. But did you hang and up? And that was the end of the movie. <laughs> yes, I did. Like don't up. don't hang up. It yeah, right. It's done with this movie like five seconds. Boom. No, like, no, no, it's no. It's like but, ten, um, 10 minutes of producer credits. And then, like, don't hang up. I Fuck you, like, click. <laughs> I think it was like 12 or 13 when I watched this movie. And it's just like, it's, it's like year. a crappy PG-13 <laughs> horror movie. Like, it wasn't like a fun, campy horror movie. It was just like a kind of freaky one that was felt kind of long and drawn out. Where, like, I think the plot was basically, it's been like years, but like... These, the plot was that there were these people who would, like, do these, like, prank calls and, like, freak people out, but then somebody actually died due to, like, a huge mix-up from the prank call, so, like, one of their, like, family members got revenge by, like, taking the prank call premise and making it real and, like, actually, like, killing them. So it was, they couldn't call it, like, I know who you pranked last summer, so they had to name it <laughs> Don't, Don't Hang Up. Because they might have gotten well, yeah, sued. Because that, like that sounds like, like the like, premise. Hang up. Because that sounds like the, exactly like the premise of "I know what you did last summer," except with like fewer people and phones. Can, and, I, can I also and, bring and up phones. one 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 more movie? I literally watched this. I think it was like a year or two back. All right, we'll, is, we'll uh, go ahead. All right, go ahead. And then uh, as soon as Riley's done, we'll go to Robin. Go ahead. Um, Oh, God, I can't remember what it was called, but it was the one where all the friends are, like, on a call over Skype and stuff. And then, oh, you know, God. Friends. That's, yeah, that. It's like, oh, I know God. I know it was really poorly done in most places. There were some bits of it which overly freaked me Wh- Who's out. calling us? <laughs> no, oh, no, spooky. I mean, oh. don't get me wrong. The actors were terrible. <laughs> no question there. The actors were terrible. But it was just like the overall premise of it is what freaked me out. It wasn't It wasn't like anything that actually happened in the film. It was just like, you know, the overall arcing situation. I think that's what freaked me out in that film more than anything else. So. Hey, fatty, you put your fan in the freaking blender and you do it or else um, I'll kill you like uh, you know that, I'll that kill whole, you, question yeah mark? yeah i'll <laughs> kill you like you don't really sound like mr murderer you don't really sound very committed to this premise here <laughs> like i'm and I'm, I'm seeing a lot of flaws with this whole like where are you like how are you around the entire to- uh, town this fast this doesn't really make any sense like what are these kids just like live on the same block and if that case why would you all just go to the house like this is this is already stupid, and it, like it pissed me off when I saw the commercial for that fucking movie, <laughs> because like I was just poking plot holes into it. Like that's one I mean, thing. I know, I know there's a fuck ton of plot holes, but <laughs> as I said, it's just like the overarching premise of it which freaked me out. Because if if it was me who experienced something like that, I would be very freaked out because it's like I can't run to anyone's house. Everyone's all the way half the up the fucking country or overseas. I'd be screwed. So. <laughs> Oh my god! So it's like it's, when when you think about it like that, it's like yeah, it's a it's a bit of a scary concept, but it's like you know. All right, Riley, do you have anything else you wanna uh, uh, want to say before we want move? To mention, All right, go ahead. I wrote I wrote some horror of my own a oh, while back. <laughs> really? <laughs> this is a pretty funny. St- this is a pretty funny story. So you can't just use this podcast to advertise your fan fiction. <laughs> Yeah, no shit. <laughs> like it this anywhere. doesn't have. I've mean, never posted it. It's it's not <laughs> on the internet. I think I've talked about it before, but I've never actually posted it verbatim. It was um in tenth grade. It, I was in acting class, and we had a project where we had to write a one act play. And I was back on my like slasher binge at that point, so I tried to write like a super like silly and ridiculous jokey like slasher murder film as a one act play. <laughs> And it was, I think a lot of it was pretty good, but there was also some cringy stuff. And I think the way the way I handled like the defeat of the killer is like maybe the stupidest thing I've ever written. <laughs> so the killer, his origin story, is that he became like evil and hated people because his parents didn't want him, so they like left him to die in a cardboard box in the lake near this wood they're all in. 
<laughs> How fucking stereotypical can you get? <laughs> anyway, carry on. So, <laughs> the killer's weakness... You threw it by a lake and not left in a cardboard box by the fire station, or... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, it was in a lake. They threw him in a lake in a cardboard box. Which resulted in him having a completely irrational phobia of cardboard boxes, and that's how the, like, three were left alive to feed him. They extracted him with a cardboard is, box and then this, drowned him. This sounds, this sounds exactly like something, like, like, scary movie. It's like, add, add, add that stupid hilarity up by a hundred. That's pretty much what this sounds like to me. <laughs> and you said you wrote this when you were really young, right? Like, first grade, right? <laughs> no, it was 10th. 10th grade? What grade are you in Two years now? ago. Two I'm years ago? I'm in 12th grade, yeah, it was two years ago. Oh, boy. Uh, oh, alright, alright, Robin, so, I like... I also wrote a really cringy romance subplot that oh. I look back on and I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> One act. <laughs> hey, 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 it's gotta be a better love story than Twilight, though, right? <laughs> it, it, it oh, is God. probably a better love story than Twilight, at least. Uh, God, that, that's a series that could be burnt to the freaking... Like, I wish I could find I the can. masters. <laughs> like, I, I hope to find the masters of that film after the coronavirus kills us all. And I'm going to go... Nobody talks about how weird it is, how in, like, the final... The, the finale of Twilight, Jacob's like, yes, I'm going to marry your child, Bella. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's not creepy. You're like fucking... No, that's not weird at all. Yeah. 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 Like, I'm going like... to watch your daughter until she grows up and then she's mine. And you're like, what the fuck, Jacob? That's what is you know, I, 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 I put a restraining order on your ass. Make sure that applies to my daughter too. You stay the fuck away from her, you goddamn. Look, Edipo you just have, you at least have to wait. Just don't mention anything. Just wait until she's eighteen before you say anything. Instead of being all creepy about it. See that part yeah, doesn't even. Still creepy. So <laughs> it's still creepy. I mean, it's like grooming if you're not around to groom, right? <laughs> Exactly. Oh my God. I, he's a wolf as well, so hence he enjoys grooming. He's like, ah! <laughs> I, I think. <laughs> see, that, that's not even the worst part about that movie. I think if I were a fan of that movie, I'd be more pissed off that the fucking big ending was nothing more than a fucking dream. That shit, w and then they just all walk away, and then nothing really actually happens. Like, dude, there's like, I feel fucking nothing. And I just want the world to fucking burn. That that's how I like. Same thing with Lost too. The the dream of an angel shit has fucking oh, got man. to go. But anyway, uh, wait, Rob did Lost end with an all a dream ending? Yeah, it, it was it was the dude. Sort of. Yeah, it was the last Not thing that really they. Though. Well, it was the guy who was dying on the island when they Jack. first shipwrecked, and that was just oh, the nice. yeah. He was he was dying, and this is how. He saw everything going, aka the dream of an angel. Anyway, dumb. Yeah, very, very stupid. But anyway, we, this, this is the uh, bad endings from Hollywood and TV studios is not the point of the day. That's that's a whole other episode. I could probably that's a talk. Whole set of episodes. Oh, a whole <laughs> fucking set of episodes. Uh, to 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 be a Sopranos fan is to to court death. That, that's all I gotta say. <laughs> to fight them is to Oops. court death itself. Uh, that was a, a line and premise that went nowhere in the Avengers movie in the Marvel Universe. But anyway, uh, Robin, what's your uh, w what's a movie that made you have nightmares as a kid that you kind of have some nightmares or you had some nightmares as an adult when you were older? I mean, I don't, I've, I've never been a big movie watcher. I don't think I really watched anything scary as a kid, really. I mean, I watched like a lot of TV shows. Nothing scary, though. All right, um, so you, you didn't really uh, have... Games, then? Like, did any games or did you read? Anything no, I didn't play any. I didn't really play or read anything scary as a kid either. Like, I, I did. What did you do as a kid? Were you just a hermit? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> did uh, did SC did SCP ever cause you to lose any sleep? No, nothing. Nothing makes me lose any sleep. I've been thinking about. Um, I, I was talking to you on Twitter about Torchwood. And oh, uh, Torchwood's a good fucking show, man. I like. Torchwood. Yeah, and uh, when I watched. Um, what was it, uh, Children of Earth, or Miracle Day, or not Miracle Day, yeah, no, Children of Earth, that's fucking creepy, where, uh, the aliens come and they're like, we want 10% of all of your children on Earth, oh, and no. all the people, and, or we're gonna kill all of you, and, like, all the government officials are, like, like, it's so real how they're, like, the government's like, okay, well, yeah, we're gonna have to give up 10% of the children on Earth, but, like, 
here we go, round up, round them up, like, let's go, and, like, you're like, oh my god, this is exactly how it would go in real life, and it's horrible. So what show is this again? Be stubborn and then this is in Torchwood. Oh, no shit. Some right. aliens come, and they're like, we, ha we, we had your children before, we took, like, five children, and uh, they, they use them for, like, drugs. Oh my where they're God. like, they just get like, you know, like some adrenaline or something from like using the children as drugs. It's kind of like, like, it's kind of we like want 10% of your children. Like, it's kind oh. of like the whole thing in Futurama where it's like, you know, the nose is an aphrodisiac for, uh, for the, uh. <laughs> oh, dude, I, I, yeah, for lure of Omicron per yeah. CI8. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's one of my favorite, that's one of my favorite fucking shows. Oh, God. All right, uh, so I think this is the end now. Uh, Robin, where can they find you? I'm on Twitter, at Inside Alloy, and then I stream on Twitch, maybe, uh, twitch.tv slash Inside Alloy. Oh, oh man, my, my niece, Jesus, she just blows, blows freaking anger and hate and murder and sorrow every time, <laughs> every, sometimes every couple hours. Uh, uh Ryoku, where can they find you at? Uh, I'm not very active. I'm starting to be a bit more active on that. That's uh, Twitter at Ryoku Mawa. Um, and then I'm also on Mixer and on uh, Twitch as well. Uh, again, Ryoku Mawa. But I'm also on YouTube, hoping to start uh, uh, being a bit more active on there as well. Uh, and it's Rio Plays. Bear in mind, there's a few there that are actually called Rio Plays. Mine's a big orange eye, so it's kind of hard to miss. So, <laughs> yeah. As soon as you see the Mass Effect and the League of Legends content, you found the right place. So <laughs> Awesome, awesome. All right, Riley, what about you? Where can they find you? At Riley Tweets on Twitter, where I make bad jokes and get comments about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Twitch.tv slash Riley Streams is where you can see me stream once in a blue moon. Um... Pokemon Variety Hours on Stitcher, Spotify, Pixels, Polygons, and Fun, wherever podcasts are found. And the Riley Podcast Mega Feed on Stitcher or Spotify. Super important, that one. Please, please listen to it. I get, like, consistent zero listens on every podcast. Please, the Riley <laughs> Podcast Mega Feed. Subscribe. <laughs> I promise that we'll have – I promise that we'll uh, uh, put that link in the description. All right, everyone. This is Mo Diggity, and you can find me at uh, Happy Good Boy 420 on Twitter, at Happy Good Boy 420 on Twitter. And then nice. YouTube.com forward slash C forward slash Mo Diggity 42. That's also the archive for the MoCast right now, so you can go there. And you can also go check out all the links in the description of the platform of your choice right now. It's uh, primarily on Android. We're working on getting on uh, iTunes and, and Apple and all that stuff uh, a little bit later on down the line. You can go check me out at – oh, wow. You can go check me out at twitch.tv slash modiggity, uh, modiggity42 on Instagram. And, uh, yeah, that sh should be it. Oh, and – and if you want to support the show in a direct way, you can support us at patreon.com forward slash Moside Productions. Links will be in the description and all that. So I'm Mo Diggity. This is the uh, this is the MoCast, and uh, I'm signing off. And goodbye. Uh -huh. And all that. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.